going to uh, start a little series of patterns all around caddis flies. Um, this first one is called the Party on Top Caddis. Um, we developed all these caddis flies for the Missouri River, um, but of course it totally applies to anywhere that caddis flies are at. So one kind of cool thing about this pattern is it has elk hair on it, so it's very easy to see, but it's called the party on top caddis because basically uh, the elk hair on the top is really easy to see and visible, but everything below it is uh, kind of all business. So we got a really technical looking body, there's CDC, partridge, um, some little dubbing tricks uh, to make the under side, the side that the fish sees, um, really look like a caddis fly and still show a ton of visibility on top for the angler. So um, it's definitely a riff off of a traditional elk care caddis. And um, so props to the elk care caddis and other really great elk care patterns that have come before this one on for caddis flies, uh, the Blooms caddis and a bunch of other ones that we still fish a ton on the Missouri and are really effective patterns. Um, but wanted to give you a quick materials list before we got started. So this is the NU dry fly hook in number 16, made in Japan hook, super sharp. These are really good hooks. We're gonna use this for pretty much all of the different patterns in this little series. Um, we have, uh, we're gonna need a partridge feather. So make sure you have some natural colored partridge. Um, you're gonna obviously need some elk hair. You're gonna need spiky brown squirrel dubbing. So make sure it has the guard hairs in it. It's kind of funny, I got like, 50 packs of these. Um, still says Kaufman's Fly Shop on the sticker here. So those I've had for a while. Um, you're gonna need some natural mallard CDC. You're, for the body, we're using um, just like a pair, just like a, uh, a purple haze. We're using a, a Wonder Wrap or Sexy Floss, or I can't remember some of their names, Flex Span, but it's that uh, really stretchy leg material. Um, I'm using this in amber, but mess around with whatever color kind of caddis you guys have around in your areas, but um, I'm using amber tonight. Um, you're going to need some kind of a dry fly dubbing. I'm using super fine and golden olive, but any really thin, sparse, easy to roll on dry fly dubbing will work just fine. Um, I'm using nano silk brown in 12 ot for the thread. And uh, I think that's all the materials that you need. Um, so we'll get time this. I guess we're starting first fly is party on top caddis and we're calling this little series the the caddis sessions All right, we'll get started. This is uh, the party on top caddis and we're just starting with a uh, nano silk brown thread This is 12 watt And uh, the hook here is an NU-406 in a number 16. I tie a lot of my caddis in this size, although there's been a ton of small caddis on the rivers I fish lately, so we'll probably start tying these smaller. Um, so we got that one to the back. First thing we're gonna do is add the uh, tan or amber colored wonder wrap or sexy floss. Either, I think those are kind of the same thing. Um, so we'll tie that in. So once you get a couple wraps on this, you can pull pretty hard to make sure you don't build up the body any more than you want to. Um, and then we'll just wind that to the front. Cut off that little excess. Okay, and then, so the first couple wraps you can wind kind of tight, and then you can just kind of loosen as you go forward to make the body kind of get a little bit of a shape. So those are pretty tight wraps, and then we'll just kind of start loosening slightly so that the body gets a little bit thicker in the big part of the body. Okay, so we'll go like uh, two thirds up the, the hook with that body. 
that wrap and snip that off. Okay, so the second material here on the party on top caddis is um, what I do, and I just, this price is so unnecessary, but uh, I take the, um, some of the uh, dry fly, super fine dry fly dubbing in an olive color um, or a tan color if you want to match the body exactly. And then I, I mix in some spiky brown squirrel with it. So there's some of those guard fibers are coming off to kind of replicate legs on the caddis fly. So to do that, I just take a little pinch of spiky squirrel and a pinch of the super fine. Um, this is golden olive color. And I just kind of mix it into each other like that with my fingers. This is going to be a really small amount. We're not going to use anywhere near this much. And we're going to make a tiny little dubbing loop here. So I put a ton here, we're gonna use like one or two turns of this is all. Any pieces of scroll that went, that are way out of control, you can kind of just pull this all up and trim it and you can brush it out later. Okay. So what that does is that kind of spikes up um, there it is. Okay, what that does is that kind of spikes up the uh, the uh, the body here for the next material, which is partridge. So we're gonna use a little partridge feather. I'm just gonna take the tip and just chop the tip off, basically. Because what I want is to create that little V like that. And then I'm just going to strip down to the, there's about eight fibers on both sides ish. You don't have to count them exactly or anything, but just strip the feather so that there's, you know, eight to 10 fibers on both sides. Something like that. Now all we're gonna do is lay that right on top on both sides. That's probably even too many fibers. We're gonna go with closer to the eight here. More like that. So then we're going to just set that on top and these fibers are gonna splay all over the place. So it doesn't have to be perfect and your partridge feather doesn't have to be perfectly straight. A lot of them come out of the package not straight and that's fine because you'll see this is not Perfect, we're tying a caddis fly. All right, so those partridge feathers kind of splay out. You want those to be about the length, right to close to the end of the body here. Um, and then, uh, and then we're gonna add some CDC over the top of that. So. The whole premise of this fly is basically, you know, we're just trying to tie an elk hair caddis that has a nicer looking underbody. So we like elk hair caddis, but pretty simple pattern on the bottom side. So we want it to look a little, little more uh, realistic on the bottom side. So we want the CDC to just go past the partridge feathers just slightly. So we'll tie those in. And we'll trim our ends. Okay, so the, the next step here is just to um, add the elk hair in. So we're going to um, stack a little bit of elk hair. We want those tips to be um, pretty straight. One tip with a hair stacker, if you don't know this already, 
A lot of the kits come with like an aluminum or lightweight hair stacker. In my opinion, those do not stack hair as well as a heavy brass one or a heavy steel one. So get one that has some weight to it and stacks the tips a lot easier. So I want these tips to just be kind of even with the CDC out the back. And we are going to tie those in. And make sure you always wrap your elk hair to the hook after so that you never have it uh, sliding on you. And we're just going to trim off the ends as close to the bottom as we can here. Because we're going to cover that part. Okay, so the final step is we are going to make a final dubbing loop here for the head. All right, and the head is just going to be spiky squirrel. So, um, same brown spiky squirrel we used to mix with the golden olive on the previous step. Definitely don't need a lot. It's probably plenty right there, something like that. I like putting the spiky squirrel in a dubbing loop because if you do, it's a lot easier to get coverage over your elk hair on the front and it keeps the guard hairs, which we really like to make it look like the antennas and the legs of a caddis um, to stay in when fished uh, and a few fish have been caught on the same fly. It's about two and a half wraps of that. I'm just gonna pull that back. I always like to uh, whip finish this before and just set my uh, dubbing loop spinner up here on the vise. In case I uh, don't get my whip finish in perfect with all that squirrel on the front or I uh, drop it or whatever. So make sure you get a good whip finish. If you get a good one, you only need one. You can trim your loop off. Take those uh, elk hairs that got stuck in there out. You can brush out the head a little bit so that the legs stick out good. If you get any really long fibers, you can pull those out. And that is the party on top caddis. So awesome little, you know, substitution to an elk hair caddis. Not totally reinventing the wheel here. It is just a fancy elk hair caddis, but the Wonder Wrap gives you a nice profiled body. The Partridge gives you some modeling underneath the CDC kind of hides the bright elk hair, which isn't a super realistic look most of the time with caddis. And uh, the CDC and elk hair gives you quite a bit of buoyancy. And of course, you know, elk, uh, caddis have a lot of legs and antennas on the front. So kind of get that with that spiky squirrel. And this is a super deadly fly here in Montana when we got caddis hatches starting uh, traditionally right around Mother's Day. So. That's the party on top of Caddis. Thanks for watching.
Oh, 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 oh,